Hello and welcome to the Sports Detective Show on YouTube. My name is James Williams and today we had an 85-year-old record in college football that was broken during bowl season. I'll show you this article here in Sports Illustrated. Um, here's the headline here, guys. Iowa's Tory Taylor breaks 85-year-old national punting record. Right away, this is another insult stat to the Iowa offense. Um, let's go ahead and kind of read some of the the details here. Um, this is something I didn't know here. Tory Taylor punted 86 times in 2023. That's the most punts, punts in the nation. More six more than second place Navy punter. Um, that that stat is a little you know misleading to a degree because Iowa did play in the conference championship and they did play a bowl games, so they played a few more games than Navy. But still, yeesh, yeesh, that's pretty impressive. Um, he broke it like the very first punt. In the Citra Bowl, it says right here, a 62-yard punt with 12.55 left in the first quarter um, between the Hawkeyes and Tennessee gave him a major college football record, 4,181 yards punting. Wow, that is a lot of punting yards, guys. Um, that broke an 85-year-old record set by Hall of Fame former Michigan State halfback and punter John Pingle in 1938. Guys, that's pre-World War II. That's pre-World War II. That's how long this record was available. Now, as you'll read down here in a um, in a second, um, Pingle, a skilled passer and runner on top of his punny skills, registered 4,138 yards via foot for a 6-3 and three Spartans team, averaging 459.8 yards per game. So he did, this other guy had the record in nine games. Torrey Taylor, it took him 14 games to get that record. Um this is another thing, too. This is basically the end of the article. It's the last little sentence. Um, one Big Ten coach even voted Taylor as the winner of the conference's Player of the Year award. You know, he, with how important he was to the Iowa uh, team, he probably deserved to be, like, at least top 10. Because Iowa was, like, what, the fourth or fifth best team in the conference, um, depending on how you want to rank them. And he was the most valuable player on that team this year. Um, he's probably been the last few years, if we're being honest. For people that don't know, I live in Iowa. I'm thankfully not a Hawkeye fan. Um, I'm an Iowa State fan, so but I still am very much pay attention to this Iowa football team, uh, regardless of like this historic kind of offensive, you know, um, you know, negative offensive spotlight that Iowa has been shined on this year with their whole over under totals this year, um, you know, all of the jokes that have been made. I've been kind of focused on them, so I did know quite a bit about Tory Taylor. And if you're playing against Iowa, um, Tory Taylor is a huge weapon for Iowa to have. He was part of the reason their defense was so dominant because it it just always seemed he'd place punts in the perfect spots. He'd never get touchbacks um, if they were punting in their territory. He'd always just send out an absolute bomb. Um, it, it's going to be really fun to see him if he does go to the NFL. And if he does, hopefully he's successful and, you know, has a long, uh, prestigious NFL career. Now, with that being said, getting kind of the crux of everything here with Iowa, um, I don't know if people know this or not. We know that Brian Ferentz left or, you know, basically was asked to leave nicely from the Iowa offensive coordinator position. I don't know if people know this. We've known that Brian was going to be gone since like early November, I think. Iowa still is not named an offensive coordinator. They still have not hired an offensive coordinator. It's been like what? I mean, I guess the season ended like a week ago for them, but they still could have hired somebody. And if you pay attention to college football recruiting cycles, if you pay attention to college coaching car caras uh, carousel cycles, hopefully I said that word right. Sorry if I didn't. Usually it's like, right at the end of the season is when people make these moves. They do that because one, they want to beat everyone else to it. And two, we had national signing day like a month ago and you kind of need an offensive coordinator. You need your coaching staff all kind of like arranged because you need it for, you know, recruiting people in the transfer portal, recruiting high school players. And Iowa didn't do that. And that's just a sign to me right now that, and again, I've always kind of thought this, but haven't really said it in a uh, public forum like this. Getting rid of Brian Ferentz isn't going to do anything to change the Iowa offense if Kirk Ferentz is still going to be the head coach at Iowa. Now, 
with that being said, you know, we had something similar happen um, this past year with Jimbo Fisher, where Texas A&M fans were like, hey, this Jimbo offense, it's not working. He needs to hand over the reins to somebody else. Somebody else needs to be calling the plays. You know what Texas A&M did? They went and hired Bobby Petrino, who is a you know, very well-respected offensive mind in the world of college football. You watch Texas A&M at all this year, the offense did not look different even a little bit. And that's because Jimbo Fisher wouldn't hand over the reins. And that's basically part of the reason here, too, why Kirk Ferentz kept Brian around so long. And and part of the reason that they haven't hired anybody, it's maybe because it's probably because people just don't want to work with Kirk Ferentz because they know he they're going to bring him in. Uh, they're they're going to come in and Kirk Ferentz is like, oh, we're going to we're still going to keep running my stuff and we're going to keep running my personnel. Now, maybe the upside, too, is if you do bring in another offensive coordinator. Uh, maybe adjust your offensive staff a little bit. Maybe you can kind of get better quality offensive line. Maybe you can get just better talented players. But again, if you're still going to run your Kirk Ferentz, Iowa Hawkeye offense, your ceiling's only going to be so high. You're only going to be at that 10 win ceiling, maybe. And depending on your schedule, I don't know how this new schedule and stuff with the Big 12, or excuse me, the Big 10 is going to work with 18 teams. If you're going to have to start playing some of these new pack teams that are coming in, and I were really lucked out these last few years because in the Big Ten West, they all of the bad offenses were in the Big Ten West because they avoid playing Michigan a lot of years, Ohio State a lot of years, Penn State a lot of years. Michigan State a lot of these years has had a good offense. They were horrific this year, but 2021, that first year under Mel Tucker, they were very, very good offensively. Maryland's a team that likes to put it up offensively. So um, they kind of got lucky being in the Big Ten West. And I think in a way, it, not that their offense or defense wasn't spectacular, well, not that their special teams wasn't spectacular, um, but in a way it got elevated statistically in a lot of ways because they were in this terrible Big Ten West with all of these bad teams. And again, I mean, my team plays them every year. I know how good their defense and special teams is, but kind of the big point here is, guys, like th- these these records – that we keep seeing these stats that keep happening for Iowa here. I don't know if it's ever going to be as bad as it was this year, but if, if Kirk Ferentz isn't going to completely hand over the reins of the offense to somebody else and just completely change things, even if it's a thing where it's like, Hey, we're like, like Wisconsin this year, they're like, Hey, we're going to completely change our offense where we're going to be more of kind of a spread it out kind of team. We're going to, hire the they hired Phil Longo who was the North Carolina offensive coordinator they got the SMU quarterback transfer Tanner Mordecai to be their quarterback this past season and yeah there was a lot of growing pains but in the end this might be better to try and have these growing pains now than to um you know wait it's like kind of get with the times of college football if you want to compete um there's really only one team in the country that is an elite football team that still kind of plays this kind of like more conservative old school football. And that's Michigan. Um, But Michigan though, they also have elite talent. They have like seven guys on the offensive line. that are going to go to the NFL this year. They have a five-star quarterback. They have two NFL running backs. They have NFL wide receivers. They have talent all over the board. And they also have the defense to kind of like they, they, and again, too, Michigan's has its warts. Um, And I also think too, with Michigan, it's that they, they like to play that conservative style of football, but when they need to get a drive at an end of a game, like they did against Alabama and tie it up and send it to overtime, they did. And Iowa with Kirk Ferentz just doesn't have that capability. So that's kind of my rant here. Um, very impressive stat there by Tory Taylor. But again, if you're, if you guys are thinking maybe nationally, don't pay as much attention to Iowa. If Iowa, if Kirk Ferentz is going to keep running the Kirk Ferentz offense with the Kirk Ferentz players that he has, it, this these stats might I don't know again they might not get this bad, but we might be having some second and third places to some of these horrific Iowa stats um, heading into the future here. Uh, as you know, Kirk Ferentz is getting up there. Don't know if he'll be here coaching for another ten years at Iowa. So uh, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching uh, this video. Um, my name is James Williams. Like I said at the top, I've been doing this podcast now for over three years. We are just now starting to put videos like this on YouTube. So 
If you like this video, you want to see more content, I talk college football, college basketball, NBA, NFL. I've done over 50 plus interviews in my time. So um, if you really like this content and uh, similar content, hit that subscribe button. Maybe explore the page, watch a few other videos if you like that. Give it a thumbs up if you like any of them. So thank you again for watching. Um, and as always, guys, we'll talk to you next time.